Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you'll stay with me, and let's talk about some exciting stuff that's really life and death for the future of our planet, and it's totally in line with loving our neighbor and loving the earth and being good stewards of it, because that's what God commands us to do, to take care of things and not destroy them, and how bad we are at falling under the devil's sway to be selfish and wiping out things and making the world a worse place, which is the devil's goal, to make horrible conditions and to, to destroy God's beauty in the world. So I hope that today you have that peace that passes understanding. If you don't and you crave it, the key is opening your heart to the Holy Spirit and saying, Lord, let me be your vessel. Let me do your will so that I can have an eternal relationship with you. And you'll get that peace that comes from knowing with certainty that everything's going to be all right because God loves you and Jesus died for your sins and you're going to be just fine because you have eternal life due to your obedience to God's will, which is to love him and love your neighbors yourself. Now you hear me talk a lot about love your neighbors yourself and one reason why is because that's really where the rubber meets the road. You know, it's easy to say you love God. Oh, I love God. I love Jesus because Jesus isn't taking your stuff. Jesus isn't cutting in front of you in traffic. Jesus isn't grabbing the last item at the grocery store when you wanted it. Jesus is on the spiritual plane now and not in our daily lives as a physical presence like our fellow man is or like people on the other side of the world are or like people that we think are our enemies are. So loving our neighbor is where the Christian faith really meets the road and it's a place where we fail badly to really live that out and our world is a big evidence that there is a lot of unlove of neighbor going on. We're seeing that in our country with people bitterly divided, people rejecting Christian values, rejecting faith, rejecting loving their neighbor and engaging in destructive actions and tearing up other people's property out of a rage and a desire to tear things down. But what today I'm gonna talk about in depth is another subject which is a way to do God's will and love our neighbor, our long-term neighbor, which is to remineralize the soil. And you might ask, well, what in the world does remineralizing the soil have to do with loving your neighbor? I expand loving your neighbor to include loving future generations and trying to leave a good world for them to live in as well as loving other people in this world. We currently have a shortage of food and a chronic short of mineral rich food and nutritious food. We have an epidemic in America of obesity and diabetes because our food is so demineralized and has been manipulated by greed to take very low value product, grains and foods and turn them into processed foods that appeal to our inner urges to have fat and sweet and salt in our diet because those are all essential things for a healthy human. We need to have quality fats in our diet. We need to have salt in our diet. Salt's an essential nutrient to maintain our balance. And sweetness is a sign that there's energy in the food, which is a key element to keeping me going. I need my energy, I need my protein, and I need my fats, and I love to get some salt. So all those things are manipulated by the food processing industry to create this fake food that creates a hidden hunger so that people eat an excess of it, trying to satisfy their nutritional system, their digestive system, needing vitamins and minerals to make our bodies work. You know, we're not a sole individual. We are a collection 
of billions of cells, billions of organisms, our guts are just teeming with a population exceeding the United States, going through unbelievable, unknown tasks. It's an absolute miracle how the human body functions with all this stuff going on inside in a beautiful harmony that when it all works, it's just such a beauty. You know, I'm blessed with good digestion. I eat well, I can eat lots of meat, I can eat lots of good vegetables, and I digest them well. Some people are afflicted with bad digestion, suffer all kinds of problems. You know, the devil is constantly trying to tear us down, and I'm blessed to be a vessel for the Holy Spirit to do His work. I'm called to preach the good news that we are saved and that we can make a difference in the world if we resist evil, if we pray to God to deliver us from evil and let us do His will. And part of His will is to sustain and nurture the earth and make it a bountiful place that can provide comfortably and safely for all things, including the wonderful creatures that have been created in the world that unfortunately man is stifling with some of his rapacious actions. But remineralizing is a process that goes on due to glaciation and volcanic emissions, which put vital nutrients back into the soil and back into the ocean. And sadly, it's been a long time since we had a major ice age. You know, right now the glaciers are in retreat. During the ice age, they expanded to cover a large part of the central U.S., came all the way down nearly to Oklahoma. Ice was nearly a mile deep in Kansas, grinding the topsoil away, grinding into the rock, making a fine rock powder that created the basis for the rich topsoil that we enjoy in America. So we are depleting our topsoil. We're eroding it away rapidly with estimates that in 60 years, much of the world's topsoil could be gone and we could be in a very sterile world that can't support a large population of humanity. So the solution to that is to do what the glaciers do, do what the volcanoes do, and grind up rocks to find powder and distribute them all around the world to remineralize the soil and create incredible vitality. There are regions like Africa where the soil is so old and depleted that it'll barely grow a plant. We need to restore minerals to that soil so that it can rejuvenate. The great news is this is a win, win, win. We can revitalize our environment. We can drastically improve the quantity and quality of food. And we can lower carbon dioxide levels and stabilize the climate without stopping using oil and gas, without a radical shift in our, envir in our society right away. You know, these people that think we're going to phase out natural gas power plants in 15 years, like Biden talks about in his plan, are just dreaming because there's no reliable source of electricity that's 24-7 except for natural gas. It can complement solar. Solar generates power about six hours a day. You can go to the Get Real Alliance Alliance website and learn a lot. We're going to have a newsletter with lots of great articles and there's going to be a ton of information. There's a link to remineralize.org on that website, which is a charity that has been doing fantastic work to promote rock dust for over 30 years. And its founder is a wonderful woman who has devoted her life to trying to change the mantra of people from demineralizing the earth to remineralizing the earth, to bring the earth to vitality, to take our sick forests and make them healthy and living because the trees have all the minerals necessary for healthy tree growth. I don't know if you've observed, but trees,
typically get smaller before they get to maturity as timber is cut and then replanted or regrows. The trees of today are tiny trees compared to the trees of thousands of years ago. There's geologic evidence of huge oak trees that were three or 400 feet tall. But now an oak tree in a demineralized environment may only get to be 30 or 40 feet tall. I had a property that was had land that was mineral rich, alluvial bottom land that had been flooded with sediment from West Texas where the soil is very mineral rich and it had brought that soil into East Texas where my ranch was into the river bottom and built this fabulous mineral rich fertile soil that was so many times more productive than the non-river bottom soil that existed on my property, some of which was so demineralized and sterile and the topsoil had eroded away where it wouldn't even grow weeds. It was really sterile. So I had a broad spectrum of soil that really educated me to the importance of minerals and quality in the soil. So we need to remineralize. And the good news is one of the most common rocks on earth is a broad source of minerals and is available in huge quantities so that we can grind up billions and billions of tons and spread them across the earth to restore earth to a much more fertile, healthy place that soaks up carbon dioxide and creates a balanced world where hunger is ended and we can thrive as a people and preserve our natural ecosystems. The natural ecosystems are in despair as well as the soil is demineralized and organisms don't thrive and lower quality organisms come in to be parasitic organisms and disease organisms. There's a tremendous amount of evidence that demineralized unvital soil creates sick plants that attract predator insects and diseases that wipe out the sick and unhealthy. Our natural system has a beautiful balance where the healthy survive and the sick and less desirable are culled out by predators both big and small to create a balance. So remineralizing is key and please go to their website, sign up for their newsletter and even better donate to spread the word and do the good news. I can't possibly talk enough in this short show about how important it is to remineralize, but there is lots of good content on that website that can really enlighten. There's a fantastic, super hard to read book called Geotherapy that's available on the website. I've read it, it was 500 pages of scientific articles and evidence that remineralization really works. Powerful stuff, but you don't have to read the book. You can just go to the website, join and sign, get the newsletters, and be inspired that we can really make a difference in the world if we really change the way we're doing from demineralizing and eroding the soil to building the soil to restoring nutrients back to the soil from food waste and human waste and animal waste. We need to recycle all those nutrients instead of allowing them to rush into the ocean to be sequestered away where they can't benefit man anymore. There's a lot going on and we're gonna talk about it a lot over the next few weeks because I think it's a critical issue for the survival of man that we really start to change the way we treat the earth so that it becomes healthy and vital you know, we talk about all the living life in our guts. Well, there's even more life living in the soil if it's healthy and treated right. But many of man's practice, such as using toxic chemicals as part of agriculture, actually kill soil life so that the soil is deprived of life. Salts, fertilizers, and other products such as herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides, all are killers. They're things that if you ate them, you'd die. And the soil life on a microscopic level 
on a level that you can barely see with a microscope, or maybe not even with a microscope, are just hammered into the ground by the toxic chemistry that man imposes on the soil in a greedy sense of trying to produce a single crop at the expense of soil health and soil vitality. So we've got to really rethink and remineralizing and using the bountiful rock dust that exists to really create healthy soil that'll create healthy plants. You know, our food has gotten so mineral deprived as plant breeders have bred plants to produce more volume and less quality over time. Corn has gone down in protein dramatically. Nutrient levels have gone down in quantity drastically. We're creating fake food that has carbohydrates because carbohydrates come from CO2 in the air. The plant creates sugars and carbohydrate compounds with very minimal use of soil minerals. Protein and minerals in the food are vital for our survival, but they're not produced directly from CO2. They require a more complex chemical and biological action to produce proteins. And soil life actually produces some of those compounds with the incredible complexity that exists in healthy soil. A miraculous thing that's hidden from view and almost impossible to register how active healthy soil can be. Sadly, soil scientists try to isolate and control, so they, in many, many cases, sterilize the soil either intentionally or accidentally using agricultural chemicals so that healthy soil doesn't exist in research. They're working with soil that's been denatured instead of being increased in natural function. So we need to do more to make the world a better place, to fulfill God's mantra that we love our neighbor, that we be good stewards of the earth. And you can do that if you come to the right mindset that you really want to care about the future. You want to make a vital world for our grandchildren, not a world where most of the world's topsoil is gone, but a world where we protect topsoil by having plant growth on the soil all the time so there's no bare soil being eroded by wind and rain and water. So this mountain of soil that's going down the Mississippi River every day is stopped and we can restrain the soil on the land and actually build topsoil due to biological activity and by adding rock dust that can be decomposed by soil life into wonderful soil compounds that increase life. <clears throat> so that's a wild story and we need to do it and we need to do it in a big way and that's one of the key elements of the Get Real Alliance program that you can learn about when our book is out and we're going to talk about it in depth. We're going to talk about it in newsletters because we need your help to turn the ship of human race activity from heading towards an iceberg of disaster, the devil's tool of misery and shortage and starvation to a world of prosperity that comes if we really adopt the mantra to love our neighbors, to love the future, to love posterity and say, we're going to make this world a better place. We're going to stop soil erosion. We're just not going to have soil eroding. We're going to build soil instead of eroding soil. We're going to restore rock nutrients to the soil and make a real difference. And the way you can do that is by joining us at the Get Real Alliance and helping us make a real difference. We're just getting started. Our website doesn't have the newsletter sign up yet, doesn't have the donate button working. We are a work in progress, friends. And all I can say is we're going to get it together. So keep the web address, write it down, and check it over time and see the growth, see the incredible 
growth that we have on our website and the increase in content. But in the right now, you can go to remineralize.org. They've been going for decades. They've got a good website with lots of content. You can sign up for their newsletter. You can donate to them, which helps the cause. They're a 501c3, so your donations are fully deductible, and they desperately need your support. I will tell you, there are so many people that are interested in doing the right thing that think all I need to do is read about it. I don't have to do anything. Well, friends, all that is necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. And nothing is what a lot of people do. Remineralize the Earth has 2,500 people joining its newsletter. But how many people give? Only a tiny handful. They read the newsletter, they take the time, they signed up for the newsletter, they like what it says, but they don't put their money where their mouth is. And my mantra is, if you believe something, if you accept something as true and vital, you need to support it by spreading the word and also by supporting the word by giving. So talk is cheap, but talk isn't free. This talk I'm giving to you is not free. It costs money to put this TV show on. And friends, we need your support so that we can do more work, so that we can promote this show and spread the good news. So if you like what you heard today, that we can really save the earth from a dark faith, from a disastrous future by the simple action, very doable action. It's gonna cost a lot of money, but we can do it to remineralize the earth and restore it to vitality, to restore our food to the quality that existed long ago, to end this epidemic of diabetes and obesity by having nutrient-rich food, that satisfies that hidden hunger so people don't just eat and eat and eat. So those things are all important and vital. And friends, we can do it, but we need your help. Remineralize.org needs your help. It needs not only more people getting the newsletter, we need 100,000 to get the newsletter, but we also need a bunch of donors to give money so that we can spread the organization add staff, add vitality, and get the good news out that rock dust is the answer both to climate, hunger, sickness, and long-term survival requires us to restore the earth to vitality and health. Friends, that's a powerful package. And I hope if you're just tuning in that you listen to this message we can save the world from the disasters that people think are happening, from hunger, from diseases, and this issue of climate change that people worry about carbon dioxide. We can solve the carbon dioxide problem if we solve the soil and make the soil healthy and vital so that it just soaks up all that carbon dioxide, leaving us with a wonderful balance of a world that is so much better than it is today. We need to fight the deserts with remineralization. There is so much going on. Sign up on our GetRealAlliance.org website. We will have our newsletter sign up and our membership sign up up soon, I promise. My website developer is a fantastic guy, very capable, but like a lot of capable people, he's got a lot of other work to do. And I am super eager to get it to where you can sign up for our newsletter and let us teach you and enlighten you and inspire you that there is a positive solution that doesn't involve something stupid like diminishing the reliability of our electric grid or trying to go to all electric vehicles which don't work for the vast majority of people who don't park their car in a garage but park it on the street or in the driveway. You know, the joys and beauty of liquid fuel for a car that you can fill up right quick, that lasts a long, long time, is so wonderful that we're really giving up a lot 
if we move away from that into this unreliability of electric grid that may not function because it doesn't have reliable sources of power, sign up for the website. We've got a powerful article that shows actual measurements of the solar radiation so that you can see for yourself what the sun's output coming down that's available for a solar panel really is. And friends, it is shocking because here in Dallas, Texas, the sun is very fickle. It's amazing how much interruption of sunlight there is from haze and light clouds. And of course, it goes away badly when there's big clouds or cloudy, rainy days. So when you see the grass, when you see what real solar power is, you realize that we need to think long and hard about other ways to produce power. And I talk about that in the book. The book's gonna be out hopefully within two months, but there's gonna be a lot of content on the website. You can go to my TV show and promote it, share it with friends, review previous issues, insightswithdavid.com, go to my YouTube channel. I desperately need subscribers. I wanna get my YouTube channel up to a much higher number so that we can name it. Right now, we're just a long gibberish name so that people can't share it easily. But we need more subscribers and we need more people to visit insightswithdavid.com. But we need you to transition over to YouTube, which you can do from the website and join as a subscriber and share the good news, share the website with your friends, give us social media attention. If you like what I've said, if you like the message that being a good Christian means loving your neighbor as yourself, and loving your neighbor as yourself means loving future generations, means loving people in other parts of the world, and means making God's world a better place. And we can do that by remineralizing. So friends, if you can let that peace into your life, if you can let the Holy Spirit into your life, you will have the peace that passes understanding. So even if the whole big world follows the evil path of depletion and demineralization and destruction of the soul, you will have the peace of knowing that you have eternal life. But God calls us to do actions in this world to make this world a better place. And friends, we can do it. So go to the getrealliance.org, keep looking at it, write the, uh, the website down because we're going to do great things. May God bless you and may you have peace in your lives.